Hello everyone and welcome into another haul video here for Mandak. Um, so as you can see we are joined here with my friend Vince and uh, Mike will be in frame shortly too to go over his haul but um, yeah we went to a couple of stores around the Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton area and found a lot of shit that we're gonna show here and um, yeah it was fun. Do you want to do any thoughts about it Vince? Yeah it was, it was pretty fun. All right, <laughs> and also Luna's in here, so we're gonna have her walking around. Actually, this is Luna's first appearance on the on the channel, so say hi, Luna, to the camera. All right. Well, anyways, um, we'll just go through our hauls here and talk about what we bought, and I'll also have Mike come in um, in a later shot here to go over his stuff too. So I'll let you take it away. Okay, so I'm out, I'm first all in a row. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so first at one store, I think this might've been the only thing I got there. It's kind of a weird store, but they had a couple like, uh, I guess like, you know, the kind of underground comics. So these are two issues of Armageddon, uh, which was kind of on my radar and it's like an underground comic. You can tell it's a little looty, but it's uh, it's not like a, it's not like a, a particularly lewd thing it's just like some weird like hippie thing mm -hmm. and then at another store we went to this was which one is this uh tales of adventure tales of adventure yeah. shout out um they have some interesting um bins of, of single issue comics so i got this amazing spider-man number 234 but i'll try and make this quick i did not buy this for spider-man or for will of the wisp Wow. That's good. <laughs> um, on the cover in the corner, it says, special feature, 16 page bonus insert, a Marvel Comics guide to collecting comics. So in here, um, there's like this thing. So faded. And you could take it out if you want it, but it, it's almost like an extra comic. And it's the Marvel Comics guide to collecting comics. And they've got, it's basically like editorial stuff. They've got some definitions telling you what the golden age is, the silver age, mm -hmm. telling you the, what a, you know, a corner box on a cover is where the price is listed. Yeah. And some weird like ideas, some very out of date price guide type stuff. Really interesting little uh, curio. And I believe it was only like, it's an insert, but it was only in this Spider-Man issue. So they, and, didn't, they didn't collect it in like any different stuff. No, I don't think like it, like it's not collected alongside like when they reprinted that Spider-Man issue. It has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Oh, that's so weird. Um, and then I grabbed DC Comics Presents number 62. This is, you know, Superman's team-up book. This one features the Freedom Fighters, um, which are characters originally published by Quality Comics, but then in like the uh, like late 50s, 60s, DC starts taking over Quality's uh, IP and then eventually buys them out. Um, and this random issue of Conan is part of a, cro a loose crossover with Red Sonia. And then this random issue of Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld. So those are my single issues. And then here's one that kind of straddles the line. This is a classic Punisher. And you see it's like, it's like a square bound. It's like super old kind of trade paperback style. And this reprints a bunch of like the earliest solo Punisher stories, which were published in black and white books. So these, uh, hmm. usually in the Indicia. Okay, yeah, so this is from Marvel Preview Presents number two, Marvel Super Action number one. Um, stories by Jerry Conway, Archie Goodwin, and then art by Tony Dizanuga. So, um, the first like Punisher epic collection, for example, will basically be this and then a bunch of Spider-Man issues and stuff. So this is was a much cheaper, you know, thing to do. Luna, sorry, my cats. <laughs> Luna, stop knocking, don't knock that off the table. She's not, she's fine. Yeah, she's gonna knock it off the table. She's uh, fine. I'm sorry. Continue. No, you're fine. You, you can edit it or not. I don't so know, we'll it doesn't keep it matter. It doesn't matter. And then uh, I've got this book, Fallen Sun. It's a Captain America comic. I, mean, I don't know if you want her to eat that or bite That's it. That's what I'm saying. I'll be right back. Just keep, <laughs> keep going. I'll, I'll take care of her real quick. <laughs> 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 she was 
Batman for like two I know, minutes. she wanted to knock off the counter. Alright, go ahead. Alright, so then I got this book, Fallen Sun, The Death of Captain America, or The Death of Captain America, Fallen Sun, whichever way. This is Jeff Loeb and then a mix of artists. You got John Cassidy, David Finch, Ed McGinnis, Jeremy Mita Jr., and Lionel Francis Yu. It follows, you know, the death of Captain America, and it's like different characters reacting from different perspectives. It's kind of like divisive, but I haven't had it this whole time somehow, and uh, I'll throw it on the cap shelf. Now this, um, Batman and the Mad Monk by Matt Wagner. I literally bought this to uh, flip it, so ignore that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if it's successful. We but gotta it make money somehow. It was cheap, so we'll see if it works. Um, Hopefully the buyer's not watching this video. <laughs> no, very little chance. And then this book, Titans Together Forever, this is basically like a thicker trade, relatively recent, that com consolidates like two trades previously. Um, and it's just like this Judd Winnick run on the older Titans, like pre-New 52. Then I got Mr. Miracle, which I think... No, you're not going to see this. Well, you will see Mr. Miracle again on this video. But this is Tom King's Mr. Miracle. This was like a really great deal. I think I paid like five bucks for it. And then I'll close things off. Um, I got three out of the four volumes of Joshua Dessart's Unknown Soldier take for Vertigo. Um, so I'll have to track down volume one, which is hopefully not like randomly very expensive. And then across three, <laughs> across three locations, yep. I was able to grab the complete set of Preacher um, via the like, most recent paperbacks where they consolidated down to six volumes instead of 12 um, or, you know, there are absolutes and things like that. So that's what I grabbed. Do you have any hot takes, reactions? Um, no, I mean, well, n number one, like this video if you would like to see us do a book club of Preacher because that's been a on inside joke slash failed attempt by us for like the last four years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we making it through Snyder Batman. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I think that's a good stack. Um, it's I, I said in the car earlier, but I think it's funny too with Preacher. This is the second friend that we've had now, at least of mine, that has found all six volumes of Preacher during a day of shopping at these stores. Because last year, I think Ed found all of them. I think I did four and two. I was, I yeah. was on mine, I did four. Four and two. I found four and then I bought two. Yeah, because like, because a lot of the Ollies have like a bunch of them, but um, that that I mean, Spider Man issue is really cool too. Yeah, I know that. That's yeah, so for me coming in today, I wasn't really like seeking out much super specifically, um, but I walked away with some things that I'm pretty happy about. Nothing like huge surprise that I'm like going crazy about, but yeah, these are all things that were pretty much on my list. Um, now they're knocked off the list, and it was a accomplished day. Did um did you want to share how much you spent roughly? No, I don't. I don't remember. I threw out the receipts. <laughs> what was like? What's like the thing that you're the most excited about getting? I guess. Um, I mean, having like you know, obviously preachers like in print perpetually, but yeah. getting them all at the same time and like all combined was like a pretty big, pretty good deal. Yeah. So I think just like having that, like that's, you know, that's like a really big Hallmark series mm -hmm. um, in like mainstream comics. And so definitely adding that to my shelf is a big deal. Um, and then, yeah, like some of these single issues, they're just like things that w were nice to run into. So, okay, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Transition. All right, guys. So transitioning into the next, uh, I guess, phase of our video here, I'm joined with Mike Speck. Uh, who is another one of my friends who came on this trip with us today. And, um, yeah, I guess the same question I'll ask you, how, how what are you, any thoughts about the trip? Uh, that was good. Um, it was good to get back to some of the places we haven't been to in a few years. Yeah. Um, but to start things off, Vince forgot that he also bought in an Ollie's this, uh, Marvel Legend Sleepwalker figure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it was part of the Build-A-Figure Rintra? Yeah. <laughs> Rintra yeah. Rave? From... from Doctor Strange. Yeah, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. And it is uh, the only, I think it's, no, uh, Despair. Despair and uh, Sleepwalker are the only comic book figures in this wave. Yeah. I guess they needed more to, to put in there. They needed bottom. to pat this one out, so uh, Vince, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. 
So we'll start with the two. I only bought two single issues here. Uh, we got Captain America number 317, which you have in your collection. Yep, and I think yep. back all the way when we did Crackle Comics, we covered this on a retro episode. Yep, that was back during, yep. or was that, was that during COVID? I think this was when we yeah. maybe did this during COVID, or it was a retro book of the week. Yeah, I can't remember. Because yeah. we always did the retro book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this yeah. is also the, the famous, you know, Cap and, uh, Cap and Hawkeye switch weapons. So yep. find that, and that was cool. I'm looking forward to reading that at some point. The other one I got is the 50th anniversary Detective Comics issue, where I believe it's Batman teaming up with Sherlock right. Holmes. Mm -hmm. So that's, I've always wanted to read that story. So finding that in the back issue bin at the, what was it, Tales of Adventure? Tales of Adventure. Shout out. Yeah, yeah ta shout out Tales of Adventure. Um, for those for those two things right there, so I'll yeah. put this here, and then I guess we'll start with. I didn't organize this very well. Start with your receipt. <laughs> yes, yeah, our receipt. Um, this is Brian Lee O'Malley's Seconds, which is his graphic novel he did after Scott Pilgrim, I think. Okay. Um, I don't really know what it's about, but I heard it was good. <laughs> I like that. I like those graphic novels. So, um, also I like I like Scott Pilgrim. So. <laughs> Um, which is weird because I own this and not Scott Malcolm. Oh, <laughs> but I mean, that. finding this at Second of Charles, so yeah, that's, that's good. Going to go grab that. Um, I think this is still this is still Second of Charles. I think yep. we have most of this. Is this, this still will be? Yeah. Uh, this was. I don't remember if I own this or not, but I just bought it because I'm pretty sure I didn't. Which is uh, Jeff Loeb's and Tim Sales, Catwoman went in Rome, uh, which you know spiritually connects to Long Halloween and Dark Victory. Yeah. That same pairing, um, so to get that, and also that I'll just individually go on my shelf with the Catwoman stuff I have. I love how as soon as you talk, you pull that book, start talking about it, Luna literally walked right across the table. So it's it's perfect fine. timing. It's fine. <laughs> Catwoman and Catwoman. Um, this is another second trail slide. It's Daniel Warren Johnson and Mike Spicer's uh, Murder Falcon. Uh, this is where I call off Vince off camera. The, he did this before do a power bomb. This was the book that really made him big, right? I think so. Before you know now you know, helming Transformers and with the Energon universe uh, over at uh, Image slash um, what's uh, Skybound. Okay. Um, so, and I like Dana Ward Johnson a lot, so yeah. look at that. It's going to be fun to read. I might read that and do a powerbomb back to back. Okay. Um, next thing I got, uh, which was at Comic Masters. <laughs> that, oh, okay. Um, I hate the cover because it's the stupid TV show yeah, cover. Yeah, I was going to say. But it's out of print and I didn't have it. Um, and I do need it to complete my like Starman shelf is Jeff John's uh, Star Girl, which nice. collects all of the. The series was what? Called Stars and Stripe. So it has all of that. So Star Girl, I'm sorry, because I, I, I did recently read Starman. Who is she in relation to Starman? She gets the staff after. Um, She's the yeah. she's the stepdaughter of Stripe Seed. Yeah, who was the sidekick. Was the sidekick of the Star Spangled Kid. Okay. She's not familiarly related to Starman. Okay. She's, just like, she's not related to Jack But Knight. she gets the staff yeah. though, right? Yeah, Jack Knight gives her the staff. Okay, that's right. Yeah. And then I did watch the first couple episodes of the show. The show wasn't bad. <laughs> so okay. there's, so there's all of Starman, and then Jeff Johns creates that character. Okay. And then and then the, the beginning of the JSA series, the Justice Society, um, has both Stargirl and Starman. Mm -hmm. And the Starman gets written out of the book, and Stargirl continues as a core cast member. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And this was the set of those, I think, the first stuff Jeff Johns did at DC. Oh, okay. So that's pretty, pretty like um, early 2000s, maybe? Yes. Okay. Or late, late 90s, maybe? I think it's late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, the next thing was an Ollie's Find. Um, so I think our buddy Ed had mentioned this book the other day, mm -hmm. um, but it just so happened that I found it. I don't own it. It's the hardcover version of uh, Batman, Whatever Happened to the Great Crusader. It's a two-issue Neil Gaiman story that took place right after R.I.P. before they were... So, then, so it's Neil Gaiman yeah. and Andy Kubert just kind of doing a kind of a what-if story. Kind of playing off the, the, the out Grant Morrison, Whatever Happened to the Man Tomorrow, right? Well, that was Alan Moore. But Alan Moore, my bad. Not really, <laughs> but like it's 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 his own thing. It's, well, yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like the same issue. I yeah, I actually um, read that, so I should know that. <laughs> it's uh, I don't I haven't read it in years. I think the first time I read it was my high school library had it because okay. of Neil Gaiman's name. That's why they had. Oh it yeah, of course, yeah. So I remember it being pretty good, but it's like it's it's definitely like trippy. It's it's more of like a dream than anything. Okay. 
Uh, not bad for a two issue filler though. It's one issue of Batman, one issue of Detective Comics. Yeah, I might check that out. Oh, these two books are from you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I just put them in there. <laughs> well, remember to when we when we cut again, I'll get you the, your Iron Man figure so you can show that. Your other oh one. yeah, yeah, Just sure, in the bag. Yeah. Uh, you gave me Beta Ray Bill God Hunter, and then Danny Ward Johnson's Beta Ray Bill. So that's that's really good. The art's really yes. great. Um, it's just a really good story about Beta Ray Bill. Yep, it's the, both of these are happy. I almost bought that Beta Ray Bill figure. It oh, yeah. today. That would have been nice to pick up. So, I think this was the encounter next. Uh, these were what? The $5? Some good deals there. Some good deals the there. <laughs> um, because I have volumes 1 through 4 mm -hmm. of Nightwing. Now we have volume 5, The Hunt for Oracle. Okay. And then volume 6, To Serve and Protect, which I think overlaps a lot with No Man's Land. Okay. But I believe I only have 7 and 8 now to go, which I could theoretically find at a second and Charles soon. <laughs> You stop there at the top of the, uh, I could, the one Harrisburg. I could table. do it and grab them and then be <laughs> done. Be nice. And then I have the Pete Tomasi run. So uh, DC, if you want to print the, reprint the Devin Grayson run, uh, that'd be great. If you want to reprint a lot of stuff, that would be great. <laughs> well, the problem now, though, is that they're doing the first compendium of this. Oh, okay. But I've already, I'm, I'm in too deep. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not changing formats, especially now that I got five and six and I only need two more. Nice. Uh, Vince handed this to me, which uh, I surprisingly, this is not in the JLA trades. This is a, uh, J Grant Morrison and Ed McGuinness's JLA Ultramarine Court, which uh, this is what where Batman builds a uh, robot Justice League to help him fight fight uh, what Grilly Grod. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it's something like that. Well, I remember I had the uh, I have the I think I gave it to our other buddy Dan. Okay. The robot Superman figure. Oh yeah. I had that in like a history of Superman. Yeah, he's, a big, he's a big figure person. Um. Also a big. Uh, uh, Bay Bay, yep, Bay Bay Bay. Uh, with this will be the, the the Ollie's book of the trip. We all bought <laughs> Shack by Tom King because in hardcover for just a little over what you can buy an issue of Batman now. An issue of Batman's five ninety nine. This is seven ninety nine. That's so sad. That's really yeah, sad. Yeah, uh, the state of the industry is collapsing on single issues. What? <laughs> um, I got this one another from the encounter. Let's take the stupid tag off. Yeah, I think that. Uh, this is uh, Batman Death by Design by Chip Kidd. Nice. Um, and Dave Taylor. Uh, Chip Kidd, more known as a prominent designer in comic books. I think this is one of the few works he's written. It might be one of the only outside of like periodicals, I think. Vince, stop me if I'm wrong. But uh, this book came out back when I was in high school. I want to say it like around... Look at the copyright date. Mid-2010s. There's a copyright date in here. Look. This is horrible content. Um... I love that. I love that design of the book, by the way. Yes, and it's like graphite. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different. Stands out. So, 2012. Okay. Yeah. So, so, what this was supposed to be described as to me is basically the 1940s Batman movie okay. that was never made. Hmm. So it's it's very much like you can look at it. It's Golden set. Age. Yeah, yeah, it's set in the forty. Like pretend that you're reading a 1940s bat like Batman picture. Oh, okay. Um, and this is what this is. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because I, I yeah. saw like some of the panels in there, and like the way that they even the dress. Looks... Well, I'm happy I found it because remember I saw a copy of this at Second and Charles, mm -hmm. but there was no price tag on it. Yeah. So finding it later, um, and also like wanted to read it for years. He fights a villain very much that looks like the Joker in this, but it's not the Joker. Oh, okay, that's interesting. But you can see like the giant, like yeah, like it, like I said, it's like the citizen picture Citizen Kane, but Batman okay. <laughs> level scope. I think that's what they're going for. That yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, and then the last thing in my swell before we get figures is the uh, the two hardcovers for uh, uh, Jason Aaron and prominently it's Bacallo? Uh, Chris Bacalo and Bacalo. Kevin Nolan yeah. um, their run on Doctor Strange the two hardcovers which this will fit well for my Strange collection because yeah. I have the Donny Cates complete collection and this kind of comes right before that yeah. and I do know that this run is praised or at least this came out around what the first Doctor Strange movie yeah I was, was it like 2015 something like that I think it was the... the first big launch right after the movie I feel like that's when it was at yeah um, I know it's pretty acclaimed I liked it yeah so um, so I'm excited to read that yeah. and the last thing is um, for years I'm a big Daredevil fan mm -hmm. it's weird that I don't have a Daredevil figure there you go 
once again at the encounter, and well, when we get to yours, I, I think we found two deals that we just couldn't pass up. Now, mm -hmm. I think you got the better of the two deals. <laughs> because all I get is uh, a base and Daredevil. A cross, yeah. <laughs> it's the Marvel Select Daredevil. Uh, this is an old figure. Yeah. This is... Oof. It, it was copyrighted to cover... Copyrighted 2022, but I know this is one that they've kept in circulation. For oh, years. yeah, I was going to say this, like, this design. Um, it has on the back, it's supposed to be reminiscent of the Joe Quesada Guardian Devil run. Yep. Mm -hmm. With that, um, so I'm happy to have a Daredevil figure that'll go on my shelf now. Yeah. Uh, with base, and for, you know, $14.99 routinely, Marvel Selects go for about 30 bucks. Yeah, you can't pass it to, up. To, to, you can't really pass it up. I think it's because of the package a little bit up. Um, you know, I I say let them breathe. They ain't gonna stay, they ain't gonna stay in this, especially look at this gaudy, awful, huge. Yeah, it's just so bulky. It's so bulky. Yeah. Uh, Marvel Selects not known great for articulation, but they killed it on the bases. So if I can get him to pose on that cross, yeah, that will look cool on a shelf. <laughs> I know that that cross is probably honestly I've, what makes it for me. I think what I've heard is it doesn't fit great. Okay. But surprisingly, the only other Daredevil figure that I've had was the Marvel Legends Daredevil. Okay. Which was based on the 2003 movie. Oh, God. Yeah, so it that's, was, be that's much better. It much better, <laughs> yes. But the funny thing about that figure, and this is just on a tangent now, you know, Marvel Legends were known for having the ball joint, the shoulders. Yeah. That figure, the, the Ben Affleck one, mm -hmm. only went up and down. That's stupid. It's very, it's a very weird figure. Yeah, that looks really dumb. I think I still have it packed away. So because like the only pose you can do is like just straight down, right? Like yeah. you're not gonna lift it up. Exactly. But if I still well, have that figure and I still have the Billy Club, I'm definitely gonna replace the Billy Club. Oh, yeah. this because I don't like the white Billy Club. I just don't like like I I I like figures. Don't get me wrong, but like I can't buy figures that are based off of, like movies. I just I, I can't do it either. It's this weird thing to me. Like it's like I like having something that's like from comics because it feels different. Like having something lifted from a book into a 3D like version of it. I want the upcoming Marvel Select Captain America. I'll show you that okay. later when we're off. It looks really really cool. As long as it has chainmail, that's all I care about. Um, <laughs> you can change it. It's got two separate heads. You can oh, do okay. Golden Age head where yeah. it has like the exposed neck mm -hmm. and then like. Regular one, and then it has a Steve head. Okay, that, that's perfect. All right, so that is my segment, and yeah. uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay here, or is it just going to be you? Well, I was just gonna, I mean, thank you for sharing all your stuff. Yeah. Um, like, do you want to, I guess, talk about like what your favorite find was with all this stuff after you drink your water? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, I caught that's you. That's fine. Uh, whew. I would probably say Star Girl just because that was out of print. Yeah. Even though you know I bit the bullet and paid full price for it, better than paying mm -hmm. the seventy five online. Yeah. For it, so then uh, the Beth by Design is a nice one to have because been wanting that since you know two thousand twelve. But yeah. I don't know if I want to pick a third. I would say finding ooh, I don't know. I'd say Daredevil or the Nightwings. <laughs> but I'm pretty overall happy with the stuff I found. Yeah, I was gonna say that's spending too much more than I wanted to, well, like usual do. on these things. We but, all do. You know? I mean that that sale at Tales of Adventure though was straight fire. Like that was like having finding all this stuff for like five dollars each. I think all all but spent the encounter. Yeah, the encounter. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, Tales of Tales of Adventure had like a, a buy one get one free. I'll, I'll say this about Tales of Adventure: they have that buy one get one half off, mm -hmm. and that first book's easy to find. Yeah. Because that second book, it's yeah. gonna take you hard. It's what you always end up having an odd number of books and it's like I gotta find something and it's tough too because they're really stingy about like what they'll give prices off like they don't they don't do like the buy one get one free to benefit the customer it's to get them it's to get rid of their stock it's for them to, to have you spend more money like it's not like oh you have these two thirty dollar books these two fifteen dollar books like I'll just you know what I'm saying like they yeah so it's it's also I weird as a comic why. store that is primarily doing that because they are getting rid of stock they aren't taking new stock on yeah exactly so it's a lot of old disposable trades that can have been upgraded in different formats already oh yeah but we end up still finding it's stuff, like so. shovelware <laughs> like the shovelware of, oh, yeah. of comics are in there yeah um, but uh i've gone vince is gone it's it's now time for you to show off your stuff all right well i'll show my stuff off here um so yeah so um, 
a good stack here, I would say. Um, oh, also, we'll, we'll show this here. If, no, this is for my friend, our friend. Our friend. Mike bought this for um, Ed. So, Ed, if you're watching this, here you go. This is coming your way soon. This is volume three of Nightfall. Um, this is covers the Night's End storyline. And uh, got this for a cool $6 at Anali's. <laughs> I believe this has Prodigal in it where Dick Grayson takes over as Batman for a little bit. Yep, there he yeah, is, right yeah, there. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that's I like that part of the story. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll get into my stuff here. So you kind of already saw the figure, so I guess I'll start with that. But, um, yeah, similar to Mike, uh, I also did go pretty ham at the encounter. So, um, when we were over there looking at the figures, Mike pointed out the Silver Centurion um, Marvel Select figure. So, um. I would say, one, didn't know they did a Silver Centurion, which yeah. I feel like that makes sense. They would have done one by now. But two, I walked past that. I didn't know. It. I thought it was 25 which I still would have thought was good. But yeah. fourteen ninety nine yeah. is a steal for that. Yeah, this is insane. And um, this is by far one of my favorite Iron Man armors. Obviously, this is from... Iron it's my Man. favorite. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just amazing. This is from Iron Man 200, where Tony builds this new suit to take down Obadiah Stain. Um, and this thing, Mike and I were looking at this before we start shooting this. This comes with so many accessories. It comes with his um, like extension, like electromagnetic like visor thing that comes down off of his helmet there. There's an additional helmet that's just the plain helmet there. You also have, you can't really see it. It's all the way at the bottom. It's his, it's his um, 1980s like hairdo head that you can put on there instead. Yeah, just a tiny um, shark head. Yeah, there's a stand there, looks like. Just a bunch of You have of a stand and a flying base. Yep. And then just a slew of different hands and blasts. Yeah. This is honestly more than like just the regular like Legends figures have. Like, that's that's usually at least a $30, $40 yeah. Legends figure. So No base, but you do a flying base. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I'm i perfectly fine with this, you know, because I... To check what the copyright is. Yeah, actually, let me see here. Uh, 2022 is one. So, okay, so I didn't yeah, know so, how, how new that one is. I'm assuming it's old, but... Yeah. But this com this is actually a, a piece of my Iron Man figure collection that I needed. I know you're gonna. Oh wait, we still gotta show the one the one you got me. Yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll splicey splicey later. Yeah, we'll do it later. But um, yeah, th this is one I. Made I thought you so. had the Marvel Legend for that. No, I didn't. I have the Mark One. I, I have the um the original red and gold armor. I have the modular, the um, Heroes Reborn. Right? No. Heroes Return. Heroes Return. Heroes Return. And then Extremis. And then Rescue. Because so, I, I remember maybe it was at Dimension X that I found that I, I found the Silver Centurion Legend for you. Okay. And then you didn't get it because it was like 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't really spend too much money on these figures. No. This is... <laughs> no. I usually find them at a premium for you. Um, but yeah. This... I, w I would say measured up to the Legend. This one's better. I, I think so too. The detail looks a lot better. It just has more accessories. I think it's just a better deal. And obviously, this is a lot. First and last time you'll probably ever see this box because, like, similar to Mike, I'm probably just going to end up throwing this box away because <laughs> it's already it's beat the beat hell. Shit and um, yeah, it's just really bulky. So there's the figure. Really excited for that. Um, sticking with Iron Man here okay, for a yeah, second. One. Yeah, sure. Uh, sticking with Iron Man here for a second, I did pick up some. Uh, single issues that I've been looking to get for a while here. Um, we'll start with the, the the oldest and work our way up. Um, this is Iron Man 124. Uh, this is uh, Iron Man going to battle against uh, Blizzard and some of um, Justin Hammer's lackeys. This is during the Michelini, Lane, and Ramita run. So that's that, that's one I didn't have in that run there. Similar here with 127, you have, again, Justin Hammer's, like, group of lackeys and kind of Iron Man's team of B villains, B and C level villains <laughs> uh, fighting here. Um, so, really nice art there. I think this is John, no, this is Bob Lane. So, Bob Lane and JR, JR kind of switched off a couple times during that run with the cover art. Um, and then lastly here... If my friend Nick is watching this podcast uh, video, <laughs> uh, he'll see that I found the Iron Man issue that has Moon Knight featured. 
And I think this is like they're trapped in like some type of like submarine underwater, and that's how they kind of team up and fight together. Um, I'm pretty sure he has this issue because I think he bought like every single issue with like Moon Knight appearance or something. So he, I don't know if he still has it, but I think he did at one point. Yeah, so was able to spend five bucks each on all those. So do you want me to show the figure? Or... You, you can show it now or wait for it. No, I'll show it right now. So this one right here is the Iron Man Legends figure. Um, which armor is this one again? The, that's the, the Cantwell armor. That's, so that's right. The, so the yep. Cafu Cantwell armor. Yep, so this is from that, I think it's the 20, 2020 series, right? That one started. 2022. Was it 2022? 2021. So it was very recent. Yeah, because I, because I, um, yeah, because now Jerry Duggan's writing Iron Man, yes. right? Yeah. So that was the run that came yeah. right after Campbell's. Yeah, so this is a, this is a really nice armor, a very reminiscent to the original red and gold armor from like the 1960s into the 70s. Um, I would say for modernizing it, it's pretty damn near perfect yeah <laughs> that's so alex like, ross designed it yeah i i like what well, i think i like more about it is that like it gave a little bit more gold in the armor because with extremis like we basically you know they kind of stuck with like the movie um aesthetic where there's a, a lot of red and um i think this really looks nice i like the i like the sleek we want to compare it to like extra extremis extremis was very sleek yeah. But I like the bulkiness. Like you can tell, it's an armor. It's a machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think that there's there's certain parts of it that just feel very. Um, now, are you going to collect all of them to get the controller? I don't know. Maybe we'll see. The controller, motor <laughs> figure. Oh, I could have gotten Speedball today, and I could have got I could have used him for this. Could we solve? I have we the. Uh, that, uh... I have the USA dude. Oh, there you go. Do you want to give me part of his of controller's body then? Did you keep it? I haven't opened it yet. Oh, okay. It's in my, it's well, in my apartment. I'll pay you for his... I thought about... Right arm. Left arm. <laughs> this, is, this, is how, uh, this is how weird I am. I thought about buying the Steve Rogers Super Soldier. Okay, yeah. And replacing this head on US Agent, so mm -hmm. it's Steve Rogers in the captain suit. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. So, and then, because I don't have a good Cap figure yet, they yeah. have that 20th anniversary one that I can't find, so I need a good mm -hmm. Captain America figure. Yeah. So currently, this is just... I'll have US Agent, but I need... Someone else. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I honestly can't. I'm I'm really looking forward to that too. That because that when did he become the cap? It was like three hundred something, three twenty something. Something. Like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But anyways, thank you for this. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. And we again, we did not find any of that wave. At any of the only no, out today. I was gonna say the only one I think I saw somewhere was a speedball, but that was it. And that one like not I terrible way. What super goal on that? We have what Iron Man, Donny Kate Store. Yep. Uh, Blue Marble. Blue Marble. Madam Hydra. Speedball. Quake. And Quake. Yeah. And US Agent. That's not terrible. No, that's a good, it's an all-comic good... book wave. Yeah, it's a good mix. I like that. So so there's that. So we'll put that in the collection at some point. All right. So continuing here at the trades. Pick this book up uh, per Mike's recommendation here. This is Paul Dini. It's the best Hush story. Mm -hmm. So I did read Hush over the summer in 2023. Uh, while I was in, on vacation in Stone Harbor, so that was cool. So I'll definitely be reading this at some point. And, that uh, takes place, by the way, around one while R.I.P. is happening. That is also technically happening. Okay, so I'll make sure I tie that into there. Yeah, this was in Detective Comics. But yeah, beautiful artwork here uh, by Dustin Wynn. Um, right, Dustin Wynn Zero yep. is on here. And that name is, he also did Ascender, I believe. Yep, and then also worked with Dini on Batman Streets of Gotham, which comes later. Oh, okay, cool. They do another Hush story that kind of picks up on some threads of this later, but Streets of Gotham is, I think, all that's in that Batman by Paul Dini omnibus, or he tracked down the old out of print trades. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> that's right, yeah, so. Um, no, I'm excited. I always like, I, I mean, Batman. You know, I'm always look defaulting to Mike's. Uh, I mean, Batman by Paul Dini is uh, usually a mark of quality. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I've been I've been looking at that for a while, so maybe maybe I'll end up. That's an out of print trade too now too. If I... Oh well, there you go. Maybe I'll sell to somebody in, in the future. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on with our list here, um, I I picked that one up at Second and Charles. Um, so also grab these at Second and Charles. Also per Mike's request, these are not request but recommendation. These are the. Superman, City of Tomorrow, thick paperbacks here, volumes one and two. Um, and this comes before Emperor Joker, right? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> yes. So, yes. And then, um, so, yeah, this is some nice... Taking Superman of... into the new millennium. Mm-hmm. Yep, so nice nice coloring, nice art here. Um, Ed McGinnis. Ed McGinnis, yep. Uh, can't go wrong. A really good creative team on here, too. Uh, J.M. DiMatteis, Jeff Loeb. So, Joe think, Kelly. Joe Kelly as well, yep. Sorry about that. So I, I think I'm really going to enjoy these, and um, you know, we'll see how it goes. All right. Next book I got here, a uh, couple of Mike, uh, Brian Michael Bendis. Um, Thick paperbacks. I end up getting some graphic novels that he wrote. Yeah, this is um, before before Bendis was Bendis. Yep, before he was the person that uh, we all know he him to be today. Um, but yeah, so this one here is Jinx. I don't really know too much about these, so I'm not really going to comment too much on the story. But um, they had this one, and then there was a smaller trade that I saw. But this one seemed like it had more material in it, and there's also some behind the scenes like conceptual stuff in here. So. I just defaulted for this. Did he draw this one too? Um, it says, well, no, the, the introduction is by David Mack, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I drew think that. He, Bendis drew that as well. I think this is back when Bendis still did interiors. Written and drawn by my Yep. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't even know he drew. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. I'll have to check that. I'll have to give him more of a reason. So this is his crime noir stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, I, I bought Torso a while ago while I was on a trip somewhere, so I have that. And then I have Jinx, and then also sticking with him, also picked up Goldfish. Um, so I didn't really know about this one. That's the also, one I don't have. <laughs> yeah, this one I'm really interested to read too. Um, it looks like this one's also written and drawn by him as well. Um, so, so one, uh, Vince, were these caliber press? Yeah, he was telling me about that, yeah. Got this for $5 at Encounter, so really great deals for this. Um, I think there's currently, because Jinx World's... Is it Dark Horse with Bendis now? Mm -hmm. They just did recently reprints of Jinx and Torso. Okay. I don't know if they did Goldfish yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm really excited to read these. I mean, I always really, there, there really hasn't been much of Brian Michael Bendis in my collection, at least, that I've read that I disliked. But I know he's, I know there's what's, some things he's made recently. What's going to be interesting is now reading this and then reading his Daredevil. How much of his crime and war stuff does he take? Transfer over, yeah. Transfer over, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, maybe I'll have to go back and reread his Daredevil run. Well, I feel like that's, I'm eventually going to do that at some point, so we'll see. All right, so moving in again, some more thick paperbacks here. These two kind of go together, but um, pick these both up for $5 each at the encounter. So uh, first Those are off, fines for five bucks. Yeah, five bucks. Cover price on each of these is 30 bucks, actually. So e even with that, it's still, a, I would say, a decent price for these paperbacks, but. Um, you got Jack Kirby's Mr. Miracle here. So, um, this obviously is the beginning of the character, um, at least with Jack Kirby. And then, um, and then we, I also recently bought, I think it was back in October when I was at Second Charles, I got the Steve Englehart and yeah, that's Steve the continuation. Gerber. That's the continuation that yep. happens later. Yep. So I'll be excited to read this. This was kind of what. Vince, I guess, was alluded to <laughs> earlier in the video with um, more Mr. Miracle, but... Um, well, I think yeah. he shows up in New Gods as well. Yes, he does. So I, I also picked that up as well. Um, I just want to show some of these interiors real quick, actually. I mean, these are just some really great artwork by Jack Kirby. Um, yeah, I, I, this is just really going to be a treat to read. I, I love his artwork and um, just wonder how the story will hold up. <laughs> Uh, so here's New Gods as well. Uh, this is also a big, thick paperback here. Um, again, some really great art going on here too. So, um, and I also have, I think I might have shown this in the past. I also end up, I also, in my collection, I do have Superpowers by Jack Kirby and Forever People. So. You have one more book than I do. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and all these look really nice on the shelf. They all have the same kind of design with the text and then the Jack Kirby kind of little picture I on the side. I love the uh, the Jack so, Kirby um, yeah, design that they went with with all those. Yeah, it's crazy how much more homage DC ended up giving him than Marvel did, but that's a whole other uh, the ones I <laughs> The ones I wanted to track down are Kamandi and I think Superman's mm -hmm. Pal. Okay, yeah. So you would only need, for all the Neo God stuff, you'd only need Superman's Pal and Eddie Olsen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the last. Did they, I guess they made a paperback similar to this. Yep, they all, they're all in there. Cool. So maybe I'll have to find that at some point. 
Because didn't he take that book on because it was like the lowest on the title? Yeah, he was like, that's me, I'll, I'll do something with it. All right, so... so oh, it's awesome. a repeat. Yeah, these last two are going to be repeats, so nothing new to report here, but found the hardcover of Catwoman When in Rome by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale um, at Tales of Adventure. So got this for half off, pretty much, I guess, or I don't know, a couple of dollars off, I guess. But yeah, um, Luna's sitting over here, so she's not going to walk over, over the camera during this shot. But there you go, Catwoman stuff. I think that's like the only other Catwoman book I have besides the Brubaker and Pfeiffer runs that I have. So uh, look for Lonely City by Cliff Chang. Okay, um, that was a black that was a black label book that recently got done. It's kind of a set in the future. Batman's dead, but it's uh, kind of a they're breaking into the Batcave with her and Riddler and some other villains. It's kind okay. of a uh, Catwoman mixed with Ocean's Eleven. Okay, yeah. It's I read the, only the first half of it, but it's very good. Yeah. And also Cliff Chang. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in her as a character, so yeah, I'll definitely gonna look out for that. Um, and the last one here, I won't spend too much time on this, but I also did pick up uh, Rorschach. Is that how you yes. say it? Okay, Rorschach. Yeah. This I, is where we learned today that yeah. you did not read Watchmen. I know, yeah. We, we found out. I have Watchmen in my collection. I still haven't read it yet. So after I'm done with my read-through of more. I'm almost Boys, curious. I'll read that. Read that first and then read Watchmen and see how well, yeah. that... I was asking, go. yeah, yeah. I was asking Vince. I'm like, do I need to read Watchmen first before yes. this? Okay. <laughs> well, no, he said it doesn't matter. That looks strictly connected. Okay. I mean, it would definitely be a different experience that if you were to read that first, though. Yeah, I'm probably really confused, like what the hell's going on. But, um, but yeah, that's my stack. I think overall, I spent like about eighty, ninety some dollars, which some of that is skewed a little bit because I did have store credit from from Second and Charles, so I used that. Um, but no, it was a great day of spending, and um, I guess we'll, you know, we can go into the outro here and close out this video for you guys. So, yeah, watch and subscribe to him. I yeah, don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happens now. So, yeah, so I guess I'll just, I'll just, um, I'll just say, you know, thank you guys for watching. Again, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more content. Um, obviously, with this being the 155th haul video. Um, there's 154 more of these you guys can go back and watch in a playlist on my channel. But, um, yeah, again, thank you guys for uh, Meat coming. Man. <laughs> yes, there's also Meat Man. Meat Man 2 is coming out soon. Um, will, Meat Man be, will Meat Man 2 already be out by the time this comes out? I hope so. So just say more Meat Man coming. <laughs> yes, more Meat Man coming your way. So, um, but, yeah, that's, that's everything, guys. So until next time, I will see you guys on the flip side. Peace.